Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion setting forth his sovereignty and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. We go by this building on our way to Corsicana to see my grandmother and grandfather, Elder Sister J. M. Fan. I'm sure some of you may know him. My mother would always point out the church to us and she'd say, Now, boys, I want you to look at that. That's a primitive Baptist church. And it was good to see this building, but it's even better to come inside. And it's very, very good when you feel the Lord inside of you. I felt the Lord with us this morning. It feels like I've kind of gone back in time to the old beatings of my youth. It kind of sounds funny coming up. But I swear it is. I certainly appreciate your hospitality, your fellowship. And I look forward to many years of continued fellowship. If the Lord give us grace. May God bless you is my prayer. I'd like to turn to the book of Acts in the 8th chapter. I'd like to look at a story or an incident found recorded in this chapter that I feel very pertinent to us today in the New Testament church. It's an incident that happened in the life of Philip. We call, we've known him as Philip the Evangelist. He was a man of the Holy Ghost, a man of wisdom, a man that the Lord had called to preach the gospel in many places. But this is probably the most unique place that he's ever preached the gospel. Listen to as the incident unfolds here in the 8th chapter of the book of Acts, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. <coughs> so, why would the Lord want Philip go to the desert to preach. You would feel that he'd want his, the gospel to be preached to as many people as there could be. Do you mean to tell me that there is going to be work in the desert? I believe there was. You know, I live in San Antonio, and I work right in the heart of downtown. But I tell you what, I'm in the middle of a great, great city, but it's one of the most barren deserts yeah. you've ever been to. But once in a while, I'll meet someone that tell the Lord, and I enjoy those little oases. And this is the way the church is. We're in a desert. This is like a watery hole. Come, to shield us from the hot sun, to be together with those we love. Notice the Spirit of God or the angel told Philip to go. Well, why didn't the angel go down and preach? Well, it's not the angel's job. It's the preacher's job. And he'll send where the preaching needs to be. We don't need a mission board. We don't need a committee. We don't need any other man to tell us where to preach. The Lord will send the preacher. And if there's a need to be for someone to hear the gospel, then the Lord will take care of that situation. We need to be mindful of that and expedient when the Lord calls us to go to different places. We shouldn't ignore the Spirit, or we can't even force the Spirit. But we must be receptive to it. Now, the Lord will tell you when to preach, where to preach, what to preach, when to start preaching, and when to stop preaching. Unfortunately, we preachers don't usually listen to the last time. We kind of just kind of keep on going. But uh, I pray the Lord will help me in that matter, that when it's time to quit, I sit down. But he told them where to go. He said, now go toward the south, which is desert. You just and don't ask any questions. Don't try to read too much into this. Don't question me. You just go and do it. And sure enough, Philip did. That's what we ought to be. We don't need to question God. We don't need to try to interpret God with our own personal viewpoint. Just do like he tells us to do. What did Solomon say in the book of Ecclesiastes, one of the last verses? He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Lord and keep his commandments. For this 
is the whole duty of man. That's it. You can't get any more simpler than that. Just fear the Lord and keep His commandments. That's all you get to think about. And that, that will give you a lifetime job, my friends. So Philip did. Said that he arose and he went. Didn't waste any time either. Just went. And behold, the man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading, what was he reading? A novel? Detective story? Comic book? He was reading Isaiah, the prophet. Well, that's pretty good reading material, don't you think? Now that's just one man. Do you mean to tell me the Lord is just concerned about one individual? That he goes to all this trouble to send a preacher just for one man? You better believe it. I'm certainly glad he is because it took one, it took me personally, the Lord to come down to me to show me the gospel of Jesus Christ. He dealt with me personally as he has every single one of you. Aren't you glad the Lord has concerned enough about you that he's opened up your mind to this glorious truth? Well, I'm certainly glad he is, and I hope I never close my mind to it, that I can stand here and enjoy the gospel all the days of my life and give God the praise to his name. You know, he was concerned enough about you that he wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, that he called you eternally, that he sent his son to die for you. Yes, you better believe it. Just one man in the middle of the district, sitting there reading the Bible, Sends the minister. Now this fellow, this, this eunuch, had a need for him. He had a question on his mind. He was reading the Bible and didn't really understand what he was reading. The Lord will send him the answer. If we're inquisitive and if we desire knowledge, the Lord will give us the answers to our questions. <coughs> and he said, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. All right, tell them where to go. You know, I felt the desire to come to this meeting this weekend. I live in San Antonio. I had to drive about 200 miles to get here, but it didn't bother me one bit. But I knew when I got here, I was going to find a group of people who wanted to serve the Lord. And I wanted to be here with you. Not because I had anything to teach you or show you, but I wanted to be here. I wanted to have the honor of being here with you. It's an honor to serve the Lord. It is. It's a great thing to do. Oh, I need to thank God so much for that. And so, the Spirit told him to go there, and Philip ran. I like that zeal. We need to be zealous. We don't need to drag our feet, wait for the Lord to take us by the hand when He tells us to do something. The time is short. Take the, if the time is precious. I will enjoy every minute that I can in the Lord's service. And time just talking about myself or carnal things is just wasting time. I want to talk about the Lord. And he ran. Said he ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? There's a good minister for you. It's concerned. Now he ran to him. Now I want you to get every bit of this. And he didn't waste any time. He didn't say, how's the weather down here in the, in the desert? How are things in Jerusalem? How are things in Ethiopia? He just jumped right into the situation and said, do you know what you're reading? See, here's a man who was receptive to God. Who understood why God sent him. Then when he saw this man sitting there, he realized God has sent me minister to this individual. He went right up to me. Understand what thou readest. And I so much appreciate this eunuch's humility. Yeah. He didn't say, what's none of your business? <coughs> well, give me a chance and I'll tell you what I think or I'll give you my opinion about it. This is the, opinion, this is the feeling that we need to have as he said, how can I except some man should guide me. I need a little direction in this. If you have any, any direction in this, I would appreciate your guidance in this matter. You know what? I love my fathers in the ministry. They mean a lot to me. And what a great privilege it is to every one of you 
to come to these men and ask their guidance. These men are taught of God. God has shown them some things. And I want to know what God has shown them. And I want to be able to come to them and say, guide me in this matter. As opposed to trying to think of my own way and making a mistake. Usually, <clears throat> making the situation worse. How can I, except some man, guide me? And I say this, how can Philip, except some man should guide Philip? And the Lord does not give him knowledge. And Philip has nothing to give to this eunuch. But the Lord has got him. And the eunuch recognizes that and says, Come up to this chariot. And he desired that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. And this is the 53rd chapter of what we know. The 53rd chapter of Isaiah. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who should declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or some other man? Well, who do you think the prophet's talking about? Didn't take much. I think he's talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. But this fellow had not heard of Jesus Christ. That's why he needed a man to guide him. That's why he needed this. Who is this? And that, you know, by the way, that was a pretty good question. That's right. That is. Yes. I can appreciate good, hard questions. You know, I've had some of these young kids come to me and ask me some brain stumpers. I didn't even think about that. I had to send them up to somebody else. I appreciate good questions. If you have a question, ask. Here's a good one right here. Who is he talking about? Himself or some other man? Well, what did Philip do? He said, well, let's set it together. He said, wait, the next verse he says, then Philip opened his mouth and began to say scripture and preached unto him who? Himself or some other man or the prophet himself. He preached unto him Jesus Christ. And you think of a better story that you'd rather hear than the story of your salvation and your redemption found in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who was this prophet talking about? None other than the man Jesus Christ. And he began in the same scripture. Isn't that amazing? At the very same place that he was reading, the very first word, he started at the same place yeah. and preached Jesus Christ. He didn't make a speech. He didn't read a poem. He didn't make a, an announcement. He preached. Now when you're preaching, my friends, then that means the Lord has given you utterance to speak unto them. And to speak the things that are of the Lord. And what's the best thing to preach? None other than Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's what Paul, he said, I can't know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's the best thing. That's the best news you'll ever hear. And I'm sure, and I know without a shadow of a doubt, that's the best news this unit has ever heard in his life. He hadn't heard anything like this in his whole life. He went to Jerusalem, probably observed the law, but he didn't find anything there. Isn't it funny? Right out in the middle of the desert, he found knowledge. Isn't that a beautiful time for the church, though? Consider this, this picture, if you will. Here's a man preaching the gospel, and he's got his, uh, his congregation. Well, how many people do you need to have church? Well, two or more. How many do they have here? Two. Well, did they have church? I believe they did. I would have liked to have been there. Yeah, that's right. I probably, if I had been a member, I would have joined them too. That's right. If you got the Lord with you, and you've got someone to speak, and you've got someone to listen, then you're having church. Amen. And you can't have it any other way. You can't play church. You can't pretend right. church. Right. You can't try to act out like you're having church. Without the Spirit, you're not going to have church. You know, but that's real funny about that. You know, I've had times when I've just, just had all kinds of liberty. It just seemed like it was just coming in 50 different channels. And then the very next time I get up to speak, I don't even know my own name. I've had it one time. You know, you just really, sometimes you really want to preach good. Yeah. And I got up there one time at our church in Combs down there in the valley. We had a pretty good crowd. I wanted to preach real good. But you know what? The Lord said, Brother, I'm going to show you who you're dependent to. And I couldn't even read the Bible right. I get the subject and the prayer get mixed up. I get verbs and adverbs mixed together. I jumble words. I was speaking in Spanish down there. I didn't know what I was saying. But that's the way it is. If the Lord's not with you, you're not going to preach. If the Lord's not with you, you're not going to hear preaching. Right. You ever been there in a the congregation? It seems like the people are just loving every minute of it. You're just sitting there saying, what? what's going on? What's happening? Well, you need, a, you need the grace of God. 
You never had time when you studied the Bible and it just opens up to you? Yes. That happened to me last week. I studied that scripture in the 15th chapter of Genesis. When God said to Abraham, fear not, I am my shield, and exceedingly great reward. You know, I've read that all my life and never stopped to consider what God was really telling Abraham and the implications of that covenant in that chapter. Read it all my life, heard it preach, but then right then, he opened it up to me. You ever had time in prayer? It was just hard to pray. You just had to grow for the words, and then finally you just had to give up. But you've had times when the Lord gave you liberty in prayer. You see, you need spirit. This is a spiritual thing we're considering that. You ever try to sing? It just sound like it was just a snag, just a drum, or just go. But you've had times when it just was the most beautiful sound you've ever heard in your life. Sometimes down there in the church that I pastor, close to Harlingen, Texas, we have about six or seven people that go to church there. Sometimes we have more. Sometimes we have less. And those old people, they, well, they really can't sing very well as far as harmony is concerned. But I'll tell you what, when the Lord's in the matter, and it may not sound like the choirs that you can hear, but it's the most beautiful sound you have ever heard in your life. And I, I wouldn't trade it for all the tea in China. When the Lord's there, that's singing, and that's what the Lord appreciates. When you're singing from the heart. The Lord was here in the desert. Where in the desert? Did you know that? Here is the desert. This old word. But the Lord has given us a moment of no oasis that we can come together and meet and enjoy the fellowship of God. Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. I would have loved to have been there to heard that sermon. I wonder what he preached about besides Jesus. I bet he talked a little bit about baptism. I think he did. Think he did. As they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? I wonder if that eunuch listened to that sermon. I think he did. Why well, makes a fellow feel good when someone listens to the sermon? <laughs> oh, here is water. I love the zeal. This is the zeal that I hope that I keep in my heart. I hope I never forget the first love. When I first saw the Lord, I was raised a primitive Baptist, but it took the same grace of God as anybody else right. to enable me to see this gospel. Right. I listened to my grandfather and my grandfather preach, but it wasn't until the Lord decided that the time was right that he opened my mind to see these beautiful truths. Right. It took the grace of God as anybody else. I wasn't any special case or special category. I enjoyed being raised in the church. I wasn't traded for anything, <coughs> but I need the grace of God every day of my life. That I may remember what I when I first saw my Lord Jesus Christ. Philip said, Where well, is water? Is there any reason that I shouldn't be baptized? I love what you said to me, and I believe it as the truth. Well, I kind of bet Philip was just saying, Well, I don't know about this. What am I going to do now? <laughs> if he wants to be baptized and I got the water, well, he said, uh, said if thou believest. With all thy heart thou mayest. See, baptism is a great privilege. It's an answer to a good conscience. It's a great privilege to be a member, to sit into that ordinance. Bill, what's saying to you? Well, what do you think? Listen to what the eunuch said. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that a miracle he never heard of him ten minutes ago, and now he believes he's the Son of God, and the author of his salvation. And he wanted to submit to that ordinance, which is a time showing us the death and burial and resurrection of his Lord, and he wanted to follow him when the follow his steps. I believe that I wouldn't have hindered him. I would have. Well, if I'd been there, I said, let's go. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they both went down the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he sprinkled it. No, Are y'all awake? <laughs> well, now wait a minute. I've seen it portrayed like that. That's wrong. That's not it. He baptized. They went both. They both went down into the water. They both came up out of the water. 
You see, that's a, how could it be a time for a portrayal of the death and burial resurrection of Jesus Christ if it's sprinkling? They didn't sprinkle just a little bit of earth on Christ. He went into the grave and he came up again. He arose from the tomb. And I and I tell you this because I've read commentaries where it does say that he sprinkled. He totally immersed him into the water and brought him back up again. And that's the way it really happened. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's a true fact, brother. There's no getting around that. And I'll argue with you all day and believe otherwise, but that's the way it happened. When they were both come up out of the water. Now read the scriptures. Read what it says. When they both were come up out of the water. How can they just go in a little bit of ankle deep water and come up out of that? You can't do it. I imagine it was deep enough for him to put them all the way down and all the way back up again. And they both came up out of that water. And the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. Well, that'll end your sermon pretty quick. It's time to, well, it's time to quit. When the Lord's finished, it's time to quit. You know, Brother Walden is the father of me. Before I was ordained, he said, David, when you get up to preach, just remember three things. Stand up, speak up, and then shut up. It's time to quit. I tried to remember that. When it's time to quit, it's when the Lord's finished with you, when you're just wasting time, it's time for other things. Spirit of the Lord. Cut him away. Can you imagine what that unit thought? Oh, what he was happy. What, what did he say? He went on his way rejoicing. Now I'll be quite honest with you. When I was coming to this meeting, I really didn't know what they were saying. I was kind of nervous. I was kind of scared. I didn't know well, just what I was going to find. But you know what? I, I found some friendly people. I felt the Spirit of God. I've heard some good preaching, some good singing, some good fellowship. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on my way home to rejoice. That's the way it always is when the Lord is with us, isn't it? Yeah, it's no other way. It's nothing to be depressed about. Or to be, it, this is something to be happy about. We ought to be the happiest yes. people Amen. in this earth. Amen. You know why? Because we've got the most priceless treasure. Yes. And we're hearing the best story yes. this world has ever heard. Of it. The story of our redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. What a privilege to hear that preach. What a privilege to study and to know it. What a privilege to be called the laborer in the vineyards. And I'm not just being ministers, I mean everybody in the service. You've all got a gift, and I encourage you to cultivate that gift and do the best you can as you work within the household of faith. And I tell you what, one of the best gifts to me is just to sit down with these patients and listen to these brethren preach. That's the best gift. If that's all I had, my friend Drew Rich. And I'm just happy to listen to that all the days of my life. I hope I never forget it. I don't want to forget that I've purged from my old sins. Therefore, I need to be on the mark. And I need to do the things that the Lord does. I need to keep myself studied in this book. I need to listen to the preaching. I need to visit. I need to ask questions. I need to come to church every time the door's open. Not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Then I'll find these beautiful truths and go on my way rejoicing. Well, Philip didn't stop preaching, though. No. He said, but Philip was found as Otis passing through. He preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. See, he didn't say, well, I got one end. That's the end of my ministry. No, he was receptive and preached the gospel in other cities. May God bless you is my prayer. To the time back. This prayer Sovereign grace. A ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.